Hi Lark community, my name is Lexi and I run Alexandria Astrology and I just wanted to come to you with some information about kind of your purpose and what to do about your career in terms of what you actually want to build. So I love the fact that Lark is doing this amazing series and when they asked me what I might be able to um, help people with, I thought of, you know what, a lot of people right now are kind of thinking, since they have that time and space, they're thinking about what exactly is it that they want to do um, from a work perspective or like what are they put on this earth for? And that is one of the things that I do with my clients. I use astrology to help people understand more about themselves and therefore be able to craft a business around who they actually are and what they're here to do. So today, what I wanted to give you all is a little bit of, um, I'm going to talk about two pieces within your birth chart that tell you a lot of things around your purpose and around your career and how those things could become more aligned together. So I might be looking away a few times because I'm looking at my notes on my computer, but the first thing that I want to tell you to prepare yourself for this conversation is you're going to want to look at your birth chart and get a two pieces of info. So first, I suggest to go to astro.com or I know a lot of people really enjoy cafeastrology.com. Those are both great resources. Um, I think Cafe Astrology makes the information a little bit more legible if you're pretty new to astrology. So what you're looking for is your Midheaven or MC. And if you're looking at the actual chart, that's going to be up at the top of the circle. Um, or, and, and also, you're also looking for your North Node. Um, some places call it your True Node. Um, so those are the two things that I'll be talking about. So you'll actually want to look at those first before you watch this video in its entirety, because the signs that I'm going to be talking about is not actually going to line up with your sun sign. So the sun sign information, if you're like, okay, well, I just want to listen to this and kind of use it from a sun sign perspective. Um, that might help a little bit. It will give you a few clues, but you're going to get way more value out of this if you find out what your midheaven is and your north node is. So with that being said, let's kind of dive into this um, and look at, you know, what does your chart have to say about the energetics of your career and the energetics of your purpose in this world? So let's start with the midheaven because that tells us so much about our career. It's one of the primary indicators of your career and what type of energy needs to be involved in that. So I'm going to first break it down per element. So fire signs is what we're going to talk about first. So these are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So each element has kind of a baseline of what those energetics are about. So that's why I'm going to divide it by the element. So if you are a fire sign um, for the midheaven, there's definitely going to be an element of action within your career um, about drive and intense passion and that get up and go energy. Um, a lot of fire signs also find themselves in um, leadership positions. That's not exclusive to fire, of course, but they do find themselves in that position more often. So if your midheaven is an Aries, this is definitely like trailblazing energy. Like you are here to initiate some things, get some new things started. Um, definitely a fire starter and a leader. A lot of people look to that Aries energy as um, as a leader to say what's you know what's our next step? Where where do we need to go um, now that we've accomplished this thing? What's the next thing? If you are a Leo midheaven. Again, leadership, but this is more from a managerial perspective where the Leo Midheaven is really good at understanding what um, 
what people are good at and being able to put them in places where they're, they are going to succeed the most. Also, um, this is, you know, some typical things that we hear about Leo is being um, entertainment driven or kind of showy or um, putting on a performance. So this is definitely possible with the Leo Midheaven as well. Um, so yeah, if you have that Leo Midheaven and you kind of feel that pull to, you know, kind of step out here and like, hey, this is me, this is what I'm, what I'm doing. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be an entertainer, but it could be that maybe you're the entertainer of the office. Um, okay, so Sagittarius. This is more um, about like bigger concepts. Um, Sagittarius Midheaven can really see the big picture. It also has this energy around um, travel, which I know is something that we hear often with Sagittarius. So if you have a Sagittarius Midheaven, maybe you find that you're going to travel a lot uh, with your career. Um, it also is very interested in philosophy and um, spirituality even from that bigger concept of like, what is life? What are we here for? Um, who are we? You know, those really big, big questions. Um, okay, so that's the fire signs, or those are the fire signs. Now on to earth. The earth element gives us a lot of grounding the earth element is far more concerned with material things, things, things of the, um, of the natural, you know, like things that you can touch and feel and hear and see. Um, also the earth signs tend to be a little bit more organized and a little bit more practical and a little bit more concerned with what's black and white to an extent. There's a little bit of like, play within that. Um, but anyway, so Taurus, if your midheaven is in Taurus, this is definitely some, some indication that you are here to understand, um, you know, hard work, <laughs> um, to be able to use all of your senses in your work. Um, it is probably the earthiest of all the earth signs. Um, so you might even find with the Taurus midheaven, that you might even work in some kind of environmental type of way. Um, Virgo, on the other hand, is more analytical, um, definitely concerned with the details and organization and being able to create and uphold processes. Capricorn, Capricorn is big CEO energy. Um, this is the natural place for the midheaven to be located um, in the natural zodiac. So very business driven, um, so high business acumen, processes oriented as well as Virgo, um, but more of Capricorn is more of the one that's like, we need a process. So Virgo, can you figure that out, please? <laughs> um, yeah, so, so again, earth signs, very practical, they're concerned with the material. Um, earth, an earth midheaven could also be very involved in product. Um, so those are a few things about earth. Air, air is very concerned with communication, um, intellectualizing things, being logic oriented, um, and having connection, like connecting with people. So from the Gemini sphere, it's more about storytelling and being able to connect in that way and spreading information and um, kind of being a little bit lighthearted, being a little fun with it. Um, if, if you are involved, if you have like a Gemini around or, um, you know, there's just somebody that always has a story that and it's super entertaining to hear. Uh, they're probably, they probably have a lot of Gemini in their chart, maybe even a Gemini midheaven if you're experiencing this energy from someone in the office. Um, Libra is more concerned with diplomacy, balance, maybe even a little bit of justice too. Um, 
and, and looking at the intellectual sides of, of that and being able to communicate and, and share their opinions on um, what's good and what isn't. Aquarius, that's a fun one. Um, so they are definitely uh, thinking about intellectualizing things, being more logical about things, but they're thinking outside of the box. They're coming up with wild, new, radical ideas that are crazy innovative. Um, they're definitely more technology oriented as well and can also be thinking about things on a humanitarian level. What's good for the masses as opposed to just the few. The last element is water. So water signs, uh, that midheaven is more directed towards um, a strong level of intuition. Oftentimes we see a water midheaven being a healer of some sort, or um, whether that's of a spiritual nature or maybe a psychologist or, or something that's more scientific in nature. So the Cancer Midheaven, that's absolutely more of a caretaker, um, kind of mothering, maybe even home-oriented industries such as cooking or um, being a realtor or um, taking care of children in some capacity. This doesn't mean that those are the only things that a Cancer Midheaven could do, but they could often be considered the mother of the office, for example. Scorpio is very alchemical healing. Um, and it doesn't even have to be healing in terms of like being a healer. This could even be um, someone who works with chemicals. So someone who is taking something, transforming it, and making it into something else. Um, the, the Scorpio Midheaven is very passionate and very, very driven. Um, where Capricorn has the business acumen, Scorpio does as well, but it's more intuitive. Lastly, we have Pisces. Pisces is the quintessential healer of all Midheavens. Um, very spiritual based, very intuitive, very service driven as well really thinking about the other at almost at all times um, and really trying to provide um, help and healing and, and service for other people. So that's the Midheaven. The Midheaven tells us, like I said, so much about the actual career itself. Sometimes it can, if you look at just the Midheaven, sometimes it can tell you the exact um, job to have or industry to work within as some of the I mentioned a few and how that could be the case, um, but oftentimes this is more about what are the energetics behind uh, what you do within that career and how are you seen within your career. Studying a little bit more deeper into that, then we could, looking at the whole chart, we could really pinpoint, okay, what's a good industry for that based off of your midheaven. So lastly, we're looking at the North Node. And so first I kind of want to introduce the concept of the North Node because it's much more than just the North Node. So every North Node has a South Node and the, the overarching concept behind these two points in the chart is that the North Node is kind of that direction that you're going in this lifetime. The South Node is what you're already really good at um, if you subscribe to the belief of past lives, that could be something that you like accomplished, accomplished, dominated in a past life. Um, but if we're just looking at, you know, right now, South Node is often your comfort zone where you might get stuck. And then the North Node is kind of that direction that's directly opposite from your comfort zone. And it's more about cultivating the the light side, the positive side, if you will, of that south node, because there's some great characteristics within that south node space that you have. So it's about cultivating those and embodying those to help you move into the other side of the coin, which is that north node. Um, so oftentimes the north node, we can talk about it as your purpose in this lifetime or your destiny. So. I'm going to talk about these in pairs. So since the North and South node are always opposite each other, we can talk about two signs at once, 
two signs at once. Um, so first we have Aries and Libra. So this axis is talking a lot about leadership versus partnership. So if you have that Aries North node, you're being asked to move into more of a leadership role and being able to um, command yourself and have your own autonomy. Um, if your North node is in Libra, it's more about thinking about the other and being more partnership driven and being able to create more balance and harmony within your life, within your business, within your family, you know, wherever that's present. Um, so Aries, more self-driven, Libra, more others driven. So again, with that North node, it's like, this is kind of the direction that we're moving. And the South node is, this is kind of where we can get stuck. So that Aries North node has the Libra South node. So if you have that Libra South node, you might feel inclined to always think about the other person before you think about yourself. And sometimes it can hold you back a lot. Um, and vice versa. If you have that Libra North node with an Aries South node, you might be very, very concerned with just yourself and you're thinking about your own needs before you start thinking about other people's needs. The Taurus Scorpio axis is kind of a big one. It's it's a lot about learning to the Taurus North Node is learning about how to earn your own keep, how to work hard for yourself and your immediate people. Where Scorpio North Node is more about building a legacy and thinking more in the in the in the broader terms of like, I am doing this for my family, but also everyone who's coming after that, like my immediate generation, but what are the generations after and building that, that massive legacy where um, it's also the Taurus Scorpio axis has a lot to say about um, help and how ready you are to receive help. So if you have that Taurus North Node um, you and having that Scorpio South Node, you might feel more inclined to accept a lot of help um, and just think like, it's all gonna be taken care of. There's somebody there that's like, you, you get like things from other people fairly easily. So that Taurus North Node is really saying, that's all well and good and that helps you, but what can you do for yourself? Work harder for yourself and your family. Um, okay, so the Gemini Sagittarius axis has a lot to do with sharing information, but the Gemini North Node is more concerned with, yes, we want to acquire that, that information and I want to share it with my immediate surroundings, with my neighbors, with my close-knit community. Where Sagittarius North Node is more concerned about acquiring the knowledge, digging deeper within that knowledge, and maybe even sharing it for the masses. Um, Sagittarius is often um, associated with teaching. So Sagittarius North Node would kind of be more of um, like a professor, where the Gemini North Node would be more of the High school teacher or the elementary school teacher. Um, so moving on then to Cancer Capricorn. So this axis is very much about your internal life versus your external life. So the Cancer North Node is really asking you to get solid in your home life um, and really build your family nucleus and the Capricorn North Node is asking you to be a little bit more career driven and focused on, on that public image and, and being more ambitious. Where Cancer, the Cancer South Node, you can get a little lost in feeling sorry for yourself and not taking ownership for um, you know things that are happening in your life. And that Capricorn North Node is asking you, hey, you need to take some ownership and you can make changes. You can you can move into what you actually want to if you just take a little bit of action. 
um, where the Cancer North Node is asking you to focus on cultivating those really close knit relationships um, and and building that family that you want um, and and realizing like if I stay in this like building this career forever and ever. I start alienating the people who are actually closest to me and that I really value the most. The Leo Aquarius axis has a lot to do with um, individuality. Both signs are very strong in being an individual, but the differences are Leo, the Leo North node asks you to value tradition a little bit more and to value your close knit family and being loyal to them, where the Aquarius North Node asks you to think in a whole new way. Um, maybe tradition isn't serving us anymore. It's also more community driven. And like I said before, with the Aquarius Midheaven, looking at things from a humanitarian level, what's good for the masses as opposed to the few. So Leo is very concerned with what's good for the few and being loyal to the few where Aquarius is like, we've got to serve all kinds of people. It takes all kinds of kinds and we can build something that is helpful for all. And finally, we have the Virgo Pisces axis. So this is a lot to do with order versus flow, um, analytics versus intuition. So Virgo North Node is really asking you to move into a more practical, organized, um, and routine space where the Pisces North Node asks you to be more in your intuitive states, to um, value flow a little bit more and release control. Um, also, Virgo Pisces can also be very concerned with the mind-body connection where Virgo is more concerned with physical health and Pisces is more concerned with mental and emotional health. Okay, so those are just a few, well, quite a few, I guess, details about the Midheaven and the North Node. Um, I will be doing a Q&A in the Lark stories. So I think they're going to put up a little question sticker. So if you have questions, please put them in there and I will answer them throughout the day. I know that this can be like a really big topic. And if you're not privy to astrology, it's like, ah, I don't even know where to go. So um, please put in any questions that you have, whether it is just, I have a, a Virgo midheaven and I, can you give me some more information? Like that's a totally acceptable question. Um, you know, or asking more details about your North node, South node. Um, yeah, so this is, just a really great time for all of us to think about what is it that we really want to build with our life? Are we actually on the aligned path that we really want to be on? You know, are we doing the things that actually light us up? Are we making, um, you know, are we, are we doing things that we don't actually want to do? Uh, so this is a great time to think about those things. Okay, so I think that's everything. Yeah, please jump in on the Q&A and I would love to connect with you guys, whether it's there or whether, you know, anywhere. You can always find me. I'm at alexandria.astrology on Instagram, Facebook, and my website is www.alexandria-astrology.com. Um, I also do offer a free meeting about this very topic. So if you feel like, oh man, I've had so many questions about this, I don't think it's enough for just the Q&A sticker, um, definitely hop onto my um, website and you can book a free session. I think I'm gonna even give that to Lark for uh, the swipe up as well. Okay, I think that's it. Have a great day. I really hope that you're getting a lot of value out of all of these videos that Lark is sharing. And you can always reach out to me if you have any questions.